Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 from the May 2012 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it says, Lion Town Cooperative was formed to produce souvenirs for the booming tourist market. The cooperative started with a share capital of $55,000 in $1 shares. So that means they had 55,000 shares. Because if it's a dollar each and you have $55,000 worth of shares, it's 55,000 shares. The cooperative is now two years old and records the following information for the first two years of operation. So we have a table here with a few columns, one for the names of the items, one for the balances or totals at 31st December 2010 and one for the 31st of December 2011. So we have some items that are not present for 2010 but are present for 2011. Now we have a sentence below here that says the cooperative paid out dividends of 10 cents per share in its first day of operation and transferred the remainder to a member's education fund. The first thing we have to do in part A is prepare the income statement and the appropriation account for Lion Town Cooperative for the first year ended 31st December 2010. So as per usual, please be sure to head up your statement with the name of the entity, the name of the statement you are doing, and the period to which it applies. So if we look in our table of information here, we are going to see cost of sales, sales and expenses. So we know for an income statement, we're going to take sales minus cost of sales, that's going to give us gross profit from which we deduct our expenses and that's going to give us net income or net profit. Now that's before appropriation. So we're going to put less appropriation. Now, the only appropriations of which we are aware are the dividends, 10 cents per share. Now remember, we saw up in the opening paragraph that they started with a share capital of $55,000 in $1 shares, which again means 55,000 shares. And if it's 10 cents per share, you'll take 55,000 and multiply by 0.1. Why 0.1? Because 10 cents is 0.1 of a dollar. So you're going to see that calculation here. 55,000 but multiplied by 0.1. And then, of course, the remainder. Now, again, let me point it out here explicitly. Um, the remainder transferred to a member's education fund. So if you had 11,000 in net income before appropriation and you paid out 5,500 in dividends, the remainder, which happens to be 5,500, is transferred to the member's education fund, leaving us with no profit or retained surplus or retained earnings. Okay, so that's the first part of the question. Let's take a look at the next part. Okay, so it says that during the second year of operation, Lion Town Cooperative began lending money to members who wish to start their own small business. So firstly, they are asking us to identify the type of cooperative under which Lion Town was classified in operation of its first year and second year. So yes, you have different types of cooperatives. In the opening paragraph, they said Lion Town Cooperative was formed to produce souvenirs for the booming tourist market. So I would put that it was a production or producer cooperative, sorry. Then in the second year, as they tell us in this little sentence here, Lion Town began lending money to members who wish to start their own small business. So that's like a credit union or a financial cooperative. Okay, now part two says, name one committee that Lion Town is likely to use to carry on its business. So if it's a lending or financial cooperative, they're going to need a loans or a credit policy or credit committee. That's the committee that decides who gets loans and sets the metrics and these rules that are used to determine who is worthy or credit worthy of getting a loan. And the last part in part B says, state one purpose of the member's education fund. Now, I think sometimes I kind of wonder exactly what they wanted to put because the answer seems relatively obvious, but I know to you it mightn't seem that obvious. So the, the fund is named member's education. So when you say one purpose of a member's education fund, to me, it's, to, it's a fund to pay for member's education. But I suppose that could take different forms. All right. So my answer is, is loans to members to pursue education. So maybe the members might want to go to a, a particular university or institution to learn things. Cool. Maybe you might pay for seminars to be held to train your members. Maybe you might put that money towards improving your computer technology available to your members or the internet speed or whatever the case is, right? But generally speaking, whatever answer you put there, just kind of tailor it to say, hey, it's going to be used for members' education, which is kind of obvious. 
All right, let's take a look at the last part of the question, shall we? Okay, so it says, for the year ended 31st December 2011, the Board of Directors records a surplus of 157500 The Board plans to do three things here. Transfer 32600 to the Members' Education Fund, pay out 27500 in dividends, and leave the remainder as undistributed profits. Now, what they want us to do is to prepare a classified balance sheet for Lion Town Cooperative for the year ended 31st December 2011, the second year of operation, taking the appropriation of the surplus into consideration. That's 10 marks. Okay, so we have a couple of little tricky things going to happen here. So just follow me on this one. So they want a statement of financial position. So I'm going to do this two ways. I'm going to do it both ways in order of permanence. In the first way, I'm going to do net assets, which is assets minus liabilities equal to capital. And in the second way, I am going to do the assets on top and capital plus liabilities below. So, of course, as you know, head up your statement property. Name of the entity, name of the statement, the period to which it applies, which is as at. I think the question said for the year ended. Remember, balance sheets are not for the year ended. They are as at. Now, the order of permanence means you're going to start with the longest lasting assets first, because permanence means long lasting. And those are non-current assets. So we have a few. So the obvious ones to most people would be the equipment and the portable stores. What would be less obvious is this item here, loans to members. So you know, you're asking, but Chris, that's, that says loans, aren't loans a liability? Right. If you borrow money, that's a loan. And if you have to pay it back, that's a liability. If you are the one lending money, that means somebody owes you money. And when somebody owes you money, that's an asset. It's like a debtor, isn't it? Okay, and why is it non-current? Because as the question told us right around here, it says during the second day of operation, Liontown Cooperative began lending money to members who wished to start their own small business. So the company, or the sorry, the cooperative essentially became almost like a credit union or a financial cooperative. They, be, they became lenders of money. And when they lend money, the money so lend is an asset. And usually loans for that type of thing to open businesses, they're going to be for periods exceeding one year. And as we know, when assets are expected to last for longer than one year, they are classified as non-current assets. So again, we are going to populate the item, the, sorry, the section, the non-current assets section with equipment and portable stalls and the loans to members. All right, so let's put those three things in, shall we? So equipment, portable stores, loans to members, and we're going to have a subtotal of 164.8. Next, we have current assets. So we're seeing two obvious ones, inventory and bank, and a less obvious one, which is interest due from members. So of course, when you lend people money, they're going to pay you back that money with interest. The interest is revenue to you. And if they owe you money, that's accrued revenue. And accrued revenue is a current asset. So we're going to put in the inventory, the interest due from members and the bank figure. Now, the bank figure here, you're seeing I have a little working. 126.4 minus 27.5. Where did that come from? That's that, that piece of information is contained down here. We have to pay out 27,500 in dividends. Now, this information down here is after we have done the balances that you've seen above in that table. So the balances above did not take into consideration these items here for the appropriation account. And the question actually did tell you that explicitly, taking the appropriation of the surplus into consideration. So if you are paying out dividends, it means money is coming out of the bank, the bank is going to decrease. So you're going to have to subtract 27.5 from the 126.4. So that's going to give us a subtotal for current assets of 130,300. Adding that to the 164.8 above gives us 295,100 for, for total assets. And now we're going to subtract liabilities. So again, in keeping with permanence, we're going to start with the non-current liabilities. So what item across here is a non-current liability? We are seeing a loan from Cooperative Union Bank of 100,000. So unless otherwise stated, loans are non-current liabilities. We only have one, so we're going to put that there. And now current liabilities. So again, we only have one, which was the creditors figure. Sorry, I kind of jumped the gun there when I put it there. But we only have one, which was the creditors. So we're going to put that there as well. So now we have 104,600 for total liabilities, which is now going to be subtracted from total assets to give us net assets of 190,500. Now that has to be financed by share capital. So the question told us that we had $55,000 worth of shares. 
And now we have a few other items here. Let's take a look. We have Members Education Fund and the Undistributed Surplus. And we have a total for this section of 190500 So let me explain these two items, starting with the undistributed profits. So you're seeing a little working here, but you're seeing decimal points. What's this? Where, where did that come from, Chris? Well, they told us here that the board records a surplus of 157500 So that's a 157.5. It's in thousands. And we have a few things to do with it, right? We have to transfer 326 to the Members Education Fund and pay out 27.5 in dividends, which we did already. And the remainder is undistributed profits. So from the 157.5, we have to subtract 32.6 and 27.5, which you're seeing here. And that gives us the 97.4. Now, what about this 38.1? Well, they did tell us it's 32.6. And remember, from the previous part of the question, we had a 5,500 um, amount transferred there. So <clears throat> when we add the 5,500 to the 326, we get 381. All right. Okay. So like I said, I promise to show you this balance sheet two ways. This is the net asset, pre net asset presentation. Sorry. So I'm now going to show you the assets equal to capital plus liabilities presentation. Still in order of permanence. Okay, so whichever order you are doing it in, always head it up properly. So we're going to start with the non-current assets. Now we know what the items are. We have the equipment, the stores, the loans, the members, subtotal. Current assets, we have inventory, interest due from members, the bank figure which was adjusted for the dividends, and we have a subtotal there, and that's the end of the top quote-unquote half of your balance sheet. And assets have to be financed by something. Where does the money come from to pay for assets? It comes from share capital and liabilities. Now the share capital section, we're going to have the 55000 for share capital, the members education fund. So remember, it was the 5005 from the previous year, plus the 32000 which was now appropriated to it this current year, giving us 38001 And the same undistributed profits of 97.4. And the calculation is the same as in the previous part. Well, the previous stuff I showed. Totaling 195. Now, liabilities. Again, we just have two. We have the loan from the Cooperative Union Bank of 100,000 and in current liabilities of creditors for the 600. We add those together, we get 104,600. And when you add that to your 190,500, we get 295,001. And your total of capital and liabilities is equal to your total assets. And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question seven from the May 2012 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and remember to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful POA handles. Any of guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.